What's going on guys? This is Jaden with the Moonlight Craftsman channel. Today's video is on my first woodworking bench build. This one right here. This is the Rob Cosman workbench at robcosman.com. After watching him on YouTube for a while, I found him to be very knowledgeable and he has a cool program called the Purple Heart Project that helps veterans with PTSD by introducing woodworking as a form of therapy. I thought this looked like a good bench for what I need and I bought the plans, vice, bench dogs, off his website and he actually gives his first time purchasers a call personally, which I thought this was pretty cool. This isn't meant to be a step-by-step how-to video, but it should give you a good idea of whether or not this could be a good bench for you. So for all the tree carcass manglers out there, we have a woodworking video today, so let's get into it. So the design calls for Baltic birch, plywood for the base. This is three quarter inch thick. Um, you can use one inch, which I think it actually calls for, but uh, you just modify it to whatever you're using or can get a hold of. And these are gonna be the horizontal pieces on the base. We're gonna round those corners up. I'm gonna use a flush trim bit later. Just do one and as you can see, just putting on some uh, pieces on the ends there and use I'll use a flush trim bit to round those up to the match the one I already rounded so as you can see it's just a bunch of strips uh, glued together and it really makes a strong base they're interlocked so there's that flush trim bit and now this is kind of an awkward cut but making the base parallel with the top because you can't get these you know exactly in line when you're gluing them up so right there also um, kind of cleaning up those edges with the tables on and finishing what it can't do with the hand tools a little round over bit soften up the corners I should have used a zero clearance saw blade when um, I was doing that to get less splinters but it's attached with bolts, so accommodating for that right here. And I don't know if you saw it, but I used the jointer to make a little gap at the very base on the bottom. And um, that worked out pretty good. So you got four pads so it, you know, doesn't rock around. You know, most people's floors aren't exactly level, so that works out pretty good. And I'm reusing these uh, pieces of MDF for the top. I had been using it as just a table for any project. I, I think I did do some video when I flattened a little slab uh, using that. So kind of repurposing that. It was kind of in the way. Screws and fender washers were used to clamp the MDF together and those are just temporary now rob's talked about it before but um it doesn't come with the design it's not that big of a modification but i wanted to wrap it with wrap the mdf top with some walnut and maple uh, that does a couple things makes it look better and it also protects the edges of the mdf which are the most susceptible to moisture all right so we've got the base complete um, it's held together with 3 8 bolts and the holes that we put in uh, these runners here we're going to put a shelf down here at the bottom and it'll be ready for the top here now and gets lag bolts in four spots to hold that on so it's fully disassembled uh, able to be disassembled and moved easily I like that it's pretty solid base so now we got a little bit more work to do on the top so we've got the top to this point um, I'm wrapping it with walnut and then there's gonna be a tray here on this side and I accidentally put the wrong board on this side here um, it was supposed to only have two pieces coming out here that would protrude through this wrapper 
on this side. Um, so unfortunately, I don't really want to remake the third piece. This piece should have gone opposite for this tray. But um, so I'm just going to make it work. I haven't made these side pieces yet. If I would have made the side pieces, I probably would have just remade uh, the outside piece. But I think I'm just going to cut these off and I'll just have one piece protruding and then um, then I'll have to do, do the opposite of this side um, on there so it won't look, the corners will be slightly different but it'll just be a good reminder for myself to pay attention to what I'm doing. Well, we got this quarter inch slot here at the bottom that'll accept the um, tray shelf and which you'll see in a little bit. So the pieces of walnut, the long ones, they were a little long to use this table saw uh, box joint jig here uh, for my ceilings. So I did those by hand, but I can do the maple pieces with the table saw here, as you can see. One thing about that MDF, my Makita track saw that you saw earlier, uh, it was kind of a little off 90, which actually kind of worked out well. So it was just barely sloped. And I put the two, I guess it'd be narrower sides, towards the center. And what that did was got a nice crisp, no gap uh, seam there at the top of that wrap around the walnut and the maple. But still getting a good glue joint because it wasn't that far off. So I just rabbited the shelf to make it thicker, a half inch thick shelf there in that tray. The vise requires some pockets to be routed out on the bottom. Um, these don't need to be very critical. There's a couple slots where some tabs uh, connect with the vise and those are the most critical. But um, just fits in there, screws in there. And then I'll go ahead and put some lag bolts in the top here. Again, you can pull those out later if you need to to disassemble it and I'm just making the chop block out of three quarter inch uh, maple here, should be plenty strong. And right here again, it's just cutting out some spaces for the hardware of the vise. I did add a piece of quarter inch steel to the back side of the vise. It's smaller than the chop block, so it won't get in the way of my tools, won't hit it with the tools or anything like that but just made it a little stronger because the chop block is a little bit big for that size of ice. The dock holes are just one inch round holes, which are a lot easier than square holes. Um, I just used a cheap tool from Menards to help me keep the bit straight, which worked out really well. And the shelf is just a piece of plywood left over from cutting the strips with some walnut strips around it. So I bet you're wondering how much this cost to build. It roughly cost about $800, with the vise and the wood costing the most at about $350 each. It's a good first workbench for me because it's solid and heavier than one that you can buy commercially in this price range, but it's still relatively easy to build. It just so happens that if you're watching this video right when it comes out, you can get 20% off bench accessories on Rob's website until the end of the day on January 1, 2024. This isn't an affiliate link or anything. I just thought that you might be interested. But if you do buy something and Rob calls you, be sure to tell him that the Moonlight Craftsman sent you. Sharing the video helps enormously if you are so generous to do that. And we'll see you on the next one, guys.